Hello everyone and welcome back into another video and the Nations Cup official season is back. So we got ourselves the best competition in Gran Turismo series and if you qualify or if you're good enough you will be able to get yourself into a live event. So this means if you're quick enough you can eventually get yourself into Montreal, Prague and Tokyo and eventually the world finals. The biggest disappointment of the whole season is that only 5 drivers from Europe will eventually be able to make it to the World Tour, which is quite difficult to do. Only top 5 guys will make it. And in general for the manufacturer season we will have a kind of a different situation where only the top guy from each competitional region will eventually make it to that regional event. Of course, this is a live event and everything can be found on the Gran Turismo website. And if you want to qualify, you can as well try in the official races in the game. So I decided to give it a shot and you probably can see how many points are in this lobby. So these are by far the biggest points that we had. And all of these drivers are ex-world tour drivers or our world tour drivers or are very very high up there so this is well the top of the top and i was able to qualify in p13 in this lobby so as i said to myself i'm gonna only gonna do this one just for fun i'm not gonna take it too serious because getting into the top five in the region is extremely difficult so i've kind of got myself into this position where we actually start behind the chicane and then all of a sudden you're just around half a second to about a second from the pack and it's really difficult to eventually get something here unless you're in the slipstream so p13 at this point just trying to follow the guys in front of me because i need the slipstream and i had well i had some really well i can say incredibly fast drivers behind me and you probably can tell who is in front of me so I'm just trying to stay in the slipstream and try not to make a mistake. So for the first one, it was kind of difficult because I didn't really know the track limits. I think I knew it, but on this circuit it's pretty random in my opinion. So sometimes you think you're gonna get a penalty and you just get away with it. And sometimes it feels like, okay, I got through the section clean and unfortunately you pick up a half a second penalty. So here, as you can see, a couple of, well, in a couple of corners we had ghosting. I guess the reason for it, because we had so many of those corners where it's really easy to actually hit someone and since we had heavy damage it was pretty difficult to avoid some of the well some of the potential situations but in the end do i really like it i'm gonna say that i don't like ghosting that much and i don't like heavy damage but it is what it is we have to adapt to it so no one who gotta have a second penalty and i've kind of got myself into the p12 in this one so Hensi made a slight mistake. I know this car can be quite twitchy in that second gear and I know it's not, I mean, it's not easy to hold it under control if you're pushing every single lap. And also I made kind of a similar mistake there and dirty air wasn't exactly the best thing in this one. So you need the slipstream on the straight, but then eventually if, as you get into the technical section like this one, it becomes... It becomes incredibly difficult to turn the car, so it feels like you are trying to turn a rock and it just won't move. And that's exactly what happened in here. I made a little mistake, I thought that the car was going to be able to make it into the turn, but unfortunately I went slightly too wide and Maxime took... I mean, he took that P12 out of me. So once again, I'm into P13 and I'm just trying to not pick up a penalty, eventually finish this race. But you can see, car is sliding, Laporte made the mistake and he ended up in the wall. So this pretty much shows you that even the guy from, well, it's usually number one on the leaderboards in the time trials, can make a mistake. So this is, well, these are the best drivers in the game and even keeping up with them, I think, in the end, I can be happy with something like this. But okay, you always want to get the best possible result out of each round and eventually get the points up high. So potentially maybe a chance to qualify for a live event. But as you can see, P13, once again, it is. So no, no, taking his place. Ghosting, once again, is on and we are on to the next straight. So keeping up with the guys was really difficult. I tried it. I really tried it. And then... It was time to pit, so lap 5 was usually the time to pit and the entry into the pits was quite interesting, so it was very important not to cross the line because you can get a free second penalty. I decided that I don't need that much fuel, I only changed the tires, didn't put any fuel in, and in this race it was just about 50-50, I mean, you could have 
potentially saved a little bit of fuel but it wasn't it wasn't like heavy fuel saving or anything like that so 51 percent of fuel was more than enough to get me across the finish line so i'm gonna save a little bit more in the slipstream maybe short shifting a couple of times but that's pretty much about it so we don't have to fuel save much it's just about staying in the slipstream revving up the car and eventually not getting a penalty because that's the one that actually slows you down the most and as you can see nono got once again one more penalty he's incredibly quick but i don't know if it's just bad luck or what it is but he was constantly getting those half a second penalties and it was just slowing him down and i just wanted to avoid it so here once again i got myself into well actually this is the first time that i got myself into p11 and this technical section was was actually a pretty difficult one in third year but now as i was in the clean air it felt well it actually felt a little bit better but then no no once again overtook me in the straight but then eventually made this mistake and uh, got himself into the wall and somehow i finished this race into p11 not very eventful for me but almost in the top 10 so yeah it was time to get into race two after this one where the leader got 482 points which is by far the best that i've seen so race two p13 again starting in the chicane again it feels like we're doing all of the same things again but this time i got turismo in front of me and i think i can actually keep up with him but then bertani and laporti behind me which i think they had kind of complications in the qualifying i think they did a couple of mistakes maybe even a potential penalty which in the end pretty much ruins your chances of a good result but turismo just at the start as i, I was talking about it half a second penalty and um, it's really going to slow you down so you just want to avoid penalties by all means but still you have to be quick so it's a very difficult thing to do just to get away with the penalties and uh, you know get good lines and good good exits and really risk it so every lap really counts but either way half a second penalty for him we got into the most well i would say the most demanding corner of them all well it's not really but it can really spin you out i've seen most of the mistakes in here so once again he goes a little bit too wide i got a better run out of this corner and i'm into p12 but also he had a pretty good run in this one because the slipstream can play uh, quite a significant role here so if you're not in the slipstream you're just going to be losing a lot of time but then turismo decided to give me a little push which i do appreciate because he knew that most likely if we start fighting now we will lose even more time so instead of him losing just about half a second to about a second he's going to lose even more in this case so i do appreciate when someone really bumps drafts you like this one because it really helps in the long run so now i was actually able to keep up or actually get closer to the guys in front of me and this was quite a big group so this was all the way up to p6 or p7 and at this point 5.8 seconds from the lead it was actually looking a lot better from the beginning i mean the beginning wasn't looking exactly great because we were already out of the slip but now it feels like i can maybe do something but we were just losing so much time in here and the car was extremely slippery when you're in the slipstream or in the air so in the corners it can be quite difficult as i said before but in well on the straight it can be really good if you're in the slipstream it can really help you so here so second gear on the way out trying not to spin out but i'm always on the limit i'm always on the limit of spinning out and i knew that i could have pushed the car a little bit more but then it would be just too risky to you know just to eventually make it across the finish line so here again i made a little mistake i went too far out and i almost lost the slipstream but then i realized that it might be a good time to save some fuel because later i'm going to need it so i don't want to put any fuel in the pit stop because that's going to lose me just about a second or two seconds so in the end it's better to save fuel in the slipstream if you can if you're just about two tenths to someone it's actually pretty useful you can just short shift you don't have to worry about it too much then you'll have more fuel in the end but then paul made that mistake second gear can be quite tough and aluni had a half a second penalty which meant that i was into p10 so the race was looking a little bit better for me and then the other guys spit it 
but then Aluni got really, really close, decided that he wanted to take the outside line here, which is again going to be the inside line of the next corner. But also, he had a lot more speed, so I really couldn't do much. I just did tap the brakes a little bit sooner, didn't want to lose any more time into that second gear on the way out, not risking it too much and just trying to minimize time loss. So in these races, you need to minimize time losses and you mi need to minimize the chances of getting a penalty because this is what really slows you down in the end. And it was time once again for a pit stop, but this time I had actually a little bit less fuel than I hoped to. So 50% in, I decided not to get any more fuel in and just get out there. So it was quite risky because I knew that I had to save a little bit more fuel, maybe one or two percent, which is usually done by short shifting and then I saw that Tsutsu had a free second penalty which meant that he probably crossed the entry or the exit line of the pit. I think this is quite harsh and I think it shouldn't be three seconds because you will never ever get a free seconds advantage and I just think this needs to be changed to maybe like a half a second to a second. Three seconds is just too much and does it does ruin your race but now Bertani almost made it work on the outside, but then he did make it work, but now it's the inside. So very well done, very well positioning, and I was back into P10. So from P9 into P10, the race, you know what, it was already 13 seconds from the leader, like Joseri was flying, followed by Koke and Killian. They were absolutely destroying everyone, I think, in this lobby, and it was just incredible pace. Unfortunately, I couldn't keep up with them. I think I was just about on average a second slower per lap So I knew that if I can get it into the top 10, I would be pretty happy with this one So just trying to stay up with Britanni. He's once again a really quick driver and it's really difficult to follow him But you never really know someone can make a mistake someone can get a penalty But then I made a mistake. I almost got a penalty and Tsutsu decided or not decided he really went for it because I just didn't have any straight line speed now. So in the inside of this corner, I realized that this is, I mean, this is not my fight. I just want to get out of this corner. I just want to get it clean. And that's exactly what I did. So once again, into the slipstream, just trying to take the most out of the situation. Eventually, he overtook Pertani and get himself into P9. But then it was the last lap and I think that it was the most interesting part of the whole race. So into P11 and I realized that Matt in front had a penalty. So all the way up to P8, we can maybe manage to do something so there is a potential place that I can get and I'm into slipstream which means that I will have a better run on the next straight so positioning the car is absolutely crucial in here so deciding kind of to give him well let him know that I'm there but then I saw yellow flags and once again I saw no no he was I guess the most unfortunate guy in this corner that I've ever seen but I got myself once again into P10 and trying to see what can I do out of this situation because I knew that I will get the slipstream, I will get a better round, but then I got even more slipstream from Mad in front which had a half a second penalty which means that I will probably get even one more place. So on the outside there was a little contact, he decided to go on the outside of this one and yeah, I almost lost the car, I thought it was over at this point and I don't know how I recovered the car from that one. Second gear on the way out, I'm incredibly close, I'm trying to take the most out of this situation. Matt is gonna serve his penalty, which is usually the toughest part of all because you're just doing so well and eventually in the last lap you need to take that penalty. But now, what can I do? So I think the only option here was send it on the outside of this corner, third gear and just push the power down and you hope that it sticks and it did stick on the outside of this corner just getting myself into P8 and I guess this was half luck half skill because I think he was in fourth gear at that point and if you're in fourth gear you just don't have the reps up that high and you're not able to get that acceleration so third gear really helped me in that one and I've managed to do that one on the outside nice and easy through these last couple of corners I don't want to make a mistake and then Tsutsu got once again, he got one more penalty, which meant that he's going to lose a second. But for me, it was P8. And I said to myself, if I manage to get a top 10, I'm going to be 
pretty happy with this one. So 335 points for P8 and what can I even say, congratulations to the winners of these lobbies because it was absolutely incredible pace.